public defender is an attorney employed by the community and responsible for giving legal aid without cost to any person who seeks it and is financially unable to employ private counsel. It is his duty to defend those accused of crime until the issue is decided in the court of law. The first public defender's office in the United States was opened in January 1913. Over the years, other offices were opened. And today, that handful has grown to a network. A network of lawyers cooperating to protect the rights of our clients. All of us have known moments when the whole world seemed turned against us. This is the story of a boy caught in such a moment of despair. Boy, you really clobbered him one. Yeah. He's crazy. He's out cold in a deep freeze. See if you can bring him around. Hey, Slugger, the fight's over. It's time to go home. What's the matter? I don't like the way he looks, Frankie. You don't think there's anything? I think he's dead. serious charge, Frankie. But I didn't kill him, Mr. Matthews. I mean, it was just an accident. An, an awful accident. It says that you struck him. I know. But it was his head hitting the pavement that did the damage, not the punch. Well, that's possible, but it still has to be proven. But I had to hit him, Mr. Matthews. He was coming at me with that piece of pipe. I didn't want him to die. I don't want anybody to die. But, but I had to protect myself. I agree. But if I'm going to help you, I have to know the truth. I want you to be honest with me, Frankie. But that's what I'm doing, sir. I want to believe you, Frankie. But it's not going to be easy to convince a jury that you were protecting yourself from unprovoked attack by someone like Paul Harris. But it happens to be the truth, Mr. Matthews. If it is, we'll be all right. Listen, Mr. Matthews, I swear to you, he started it. All right. I don't know why. For no reason at all. He's the last guy you'd expect to do something like that. He was what we called a sissy, Mr. Matthews, a, a mama's boy. A mama's boy? But I liked him, Mr. Matthews. He wasn't a bad kid. I didn't want him to die. Mama's boy or not, I didn't want him to die. Mama's boy. Mama's boy. The only way to strengthen my client's case was to unravel the mystery of why a mama's boy would start a fight to the death. The first thing was to interview mama. Mrs. Harris, I'm Bart Matthews, the public defender. Won't you sit down, Mr. Matthews? Thank you. I'm terribly sorry about the death of your son. Please, Mr. Matthews, I'd rather not talk about it. I'm sorry, but I have to. You see, I'm defending another boy. A young hoodlum. A murderer. And you're defending him. Everyone has the right to be defended in a court of law. But he killed my son. My Paul. Don't you understand? He killed my only child. I understand, Mrs. Harris. I know what a terrible blow this has been to you. I loved him so. He was all I had left in the world. Mrs. Harris, tell me something about your boy. He was the finest, most wonderful boy who ever lived. Did he ever get into any trouble with any of the other boys? No. He was so well-mannered. Too good for the others. That's why they resented him. Then there was some difficulty. No. Paul never did anything wrong. Those other boys always trying to get him into trouble. What kind of trouble? It was never his fault when things went wrong. He was a good boy. I protected him. I always protected him. You always protected him? Do you think that was the wisest thing you could have done, Mrs. Harris? Well, I was his mother, wasn't I? Yes, you were his mother. Well, then, of course, I had to protect him. That's what a mother's for, isn't she? To stand by her son when he needs her? Like the first time those boys tried to get him into trouble. You're right! 
That's all. Come on. Try tossing one. until that taxi could get me down to the police station. Were the other boys there as well? Of course, they arrested all of them. Those ruffians, pushing Paul into a thing like that. Did he blame the other boys for what had happened? He didn't know my Paul. He said it was all his fault. And of course, you didn't agree with that, did you, Mrs. Harris? Certainly not. I made it perfectly clear to that police lieutenant that none of this was to be considered Paul's fault. That those boys shouldn't be allowed to associate with my son. Paul tried to stop me. He ran across the room to where the other boys were watching. And what did you do then, Mrs. Harris? I did the only thing I could do in those circumstances. I paid for all the damage they did to the building. I wanted to show Paul that he need feel no obligation to anyone. If that window hadn't been paid for, the lieutenant told me they'd keep Paul in jail overnight. That would have been better, Mr. Matthews. I'm not sure, Mrs. Harris. I'm not sure. You don't know how a mother feels. A real mother would rather go to jail herself than to see her son suffer. Was there any other time you felt you had to protect him? Yes. That same gang of boys. I'll never forget the time they wanted him to go hunting. Are you guys sure you got everything there now? Yep. Sleeping bag, taxes, shovels, and the water bucket. Hey, Frankie, what about fancy pants? You think his mother really let him go? Hey, lay off the names, pal. He isn't so bad. Besides, his father died when he was just a kid. His old lady's all he's got. Hi, fellas. Hey, Paul. Hey, you're able to swim with the old lady, huh? Well, sure. That's why I'm down here. She said I could go. Hey, hey we going in that car? Sure, we're big shots. Yeah, my old man's taking the bus to work in the morning. Here. Ever hold one of these in your hand? Gee, sure is a beauty. <laughs> it ought to be. Set my old man back plenty. Doesn't your dad worry about your handling guns? My old man? Ah, he's been taking me on hunting trips since I was eight years old. It must be wonderful to have a father to do all those things with. God ain't so hot, though, when he takes a swipe at you for not raking the lawn. Oh, that reminds me, um, you got a sleeping bag? No. Will I need one? Did you ever try sleeping on the ground without one? No. That's all right, Paul. Uh, uh, you take mine. I'll use my old man's. Ah, oh, thanks. Gee, I, I can't wait to go. When do we start? About an hour. Hey, you, you better change those clothes. <laughs> an hour? Well, come on, get going. It's a couple hours' ride. Hey, I'll be back. Where do you think he's going? A junior prom or something? Ah, he's got to look pretty for his old lady. Yeah. Is that you, dear? Yes, Mother. Where have you been? Just out with the boys. Paul? Paul, come back here. I, I thought I'd go up to my room. Well, you're not going up without kissing your mother goodnight, are you? Mother, I want to talk to you. What about Paul, baby? Mother, I've asked you not to call me that. Oh, I'm sorry. Come and sit down and tell me about it the way you always do. Mother, listen. The boys are going on a hunting trip. They want me to come along. Hunting trip? What are you talking about? Oh, sure. We're going up to Greenvale. It's only a couple of hours away. Gee, Mom, it's going to be fun. We're going to camp out, cook our own food, sleep on the ground in sleeping bags. 
And when is all this supposed to happen? Tonight. Frankie says we've got to go in an hour. I've got to go upstairs and get ready. Paul. I can't let you go, dear. What? Mother, why not? But it's just out of the question, that's all. Sleeping on the cold ground at night and handling guns. You've never done anything like that before, Paul. It's just too dangerous. But, Mother, what's so dangerous about it? Why, Frankie and the other guys have been going hunting since they were eight years old. I'm only thinking of your welfare, dear. Stop worrying about me all the time. I'm big enough to take care of myself now. Are you? Yes, I am. And I'm going on that hunting trip. I want to be with Frankie and the other guys. I've never wanted anything more in my life. Oh, I just can't let you go away in the company of those reckless, irresponsible boys. But, Mother, I I've already promised them. How can I tell them I can't go? Oh, I'll tell them for you, dear, if it'll help. No, you won't. Paul. Oh. You cannot go. That's all there is to it. I hate you. Paul. Oh. I hate you. The idea is to shoot them, not talk them to death. <laughs> now, come on, let's hit the hay, huh? We gotta get bright and early. Yeah. Last one in the sack, push out the fryer. Oh, not me. Hey, Paul. You ever sleep on the ground before? No, but there's a first time for everything. <laughs> hey, kid, you're okay. Well, happy dreams, everybody. See you bright and early. Good night. Good night, fellas. Hey, listen, you guys. First guy that snores gets this right over the head, see? <laughs> hey, Paul. Um, how are you taking it? Oh, boy. This is the life. I never knew there were so many stars in the sky. Yeah. What's the idea? There's been an all-points bulletin issued to find you. Me? Yes, son. Your mother filed a missing persons complaint. I'm afraid we'll have to take you in. Poor darling Paul. He couldn't seem to understand why I had to do it. He didn't talk to me for almost a week after that. Boys often react that way in anger. But he shouldn't have been angry at his own mother. I'm just trying to find out, Mrs. Harris, if your son had reason to be angry with anyone. Why can't you be satisfied to leave things the way they are? Why must you come here and upset me like this? Forgive me, Mrs. Harris, but it's necessary that we find out everything we can about this case. Why? It won't bring Paul back. But another boy's life is at stake now. Yes, and he's guilty of murder. It may not be murder. It might be something else. What do you mean? What's the last thing you remember about your son? Was there a difference of opinion between you? Any argument? Of course not. Are you sure, Mrs. Harris? You said what I was doing wouldn't bring Paul back. Sending another boy to his death won't bring Paul back either. I'm sure you wouldn't want that, Mrs. Harris. No, I don't think I would. Then tell me, what went on the night before he died? Did anything happen? Yes. Something did happen. It was a terrible night. It had been raining for hours. Then I heard Paul at the door. Paul! You're not going out in this rain. Oh, it stopped raining, Mother. Oh, but darling, it's been pouring. Unless it's something terribly important. Well, it is important, Mother. It's that club up at school. 
After all these years, I, I've finally been invited to join. Oh, dear, you never told me. It's sort of a secret club, Mother. I'm not supposed to talk about it. Tonight's the initiation. Oh, they won't do anything violent, will they? Oh, no. Just sit around and take some sort of secret oath, that's all. Oh, well, if that's what you want, Paul, dear, you go right ahead. But you're not going out without your raincoat and rubbers. Oh, but, Mom, none of the other fellows wear. Well, oh, I don't care about the other boys, dear. You're far more delicate than they are. When you were nine years old, you had pneumonia, and I almost lost you. Don't forget that since your father died, you're all I have left in this world. We don't want to take any chances, do we? No, Mother. Now kiss Mother goodbye. Bye, dear. All right, men. Let's get started while the ice water is nice and cold. Jimmy English, you ready to pass the character test for admission into the secret order of the Mohawks? Ready and willing. All right, men. Escort the noble pledge to the royal bath. Pledge, you know the rules? Yeah. Ten minutes in the deep freeze or until I turn blue from head to toe. <laughs> Correct. Spoken like a true belt alpha. Um, all right, men, we're away. Oh! Oh, you feel like a knife! Oh, oh. Okay, then, how does he look? It feels like a knife! Oh, get me out of here, I'm freezing! Hey, it looks warm to me. Come on, let's have some more ice. Hey, Percy, you're next. Do you think you can take it? Even if you don't drown, you're a cinch to die in ammonia, pal. You've got 50 seconds to decide whether you want to stay alive or be a dead mohawk. Hey, he's unconscious. Better get him out of there. All right, take him out. All right, next victim. Yeah, All right, men, all away. No! I'm a coward. I'm a mama's boy. Oh, Paul, it's those other boys. They, they poisoned your mind. You're much better than they are. I'm not any better. I'm not any different than they are. First thing tomorrow, I'll make them accept me. Frankie's the leader. I'll show them. I gotta show him, even if it kills me. I'd rather die than be a mama's boy. That was the end of Mrs. Harris's story. I went at once to see Frankie to see if I could find the one piece of information I still needed. Hello, Mr. Matthews. Do things look any better? I think so, Frankie. Gee, I hope so. They can't blame me for it, can they, Mr. Matthews? All I was trying to do was protect myself. Now, Frankie, I want to make one thing very clear. I don't approve of what you and the other boys did to Paul. Now, tell me everything exactly as it happened the morning of the fight. It's important. Sure, Mr. Matthews. Well, I was on my way to school, taking a shortcut. He was waiting there for me in the alley. Hiya, Frankie. How oh, are you, Paul? Say, I'm sorry about what happened last night. It was just a gag, a crazy stunt. It didn't mean a thing. It meant I was yelling, didn't it? You're taking this too serious, Paul. It was just a joke. Yeah, a joke. A joke on me. And you pulled it on me. Hey, you nuts or something? That's not fun. It wasn't meant to be. What's the idea, Paul? English! I'm sorry about what happened last night. Are you going to talk or are you going to fight? Look, if I wanted to fight, I'd, I'd find me some competition. Listen! You better go home or you can still walk. I'll go home if you're too yellow to fight. Okay, it's your view.
exactly the way it happened, Mr. Matthews. Then Gelinard came in, and, and we learned that Paul was dead. That's all there was to it. You do believe me, don't you, Mr. Matthews? Yes, Frankie, I believe you. And I think there's a witness who will corroborate your story about Paul's attitude that morning. Who's that? Paul Harris's mother. That's the story, Mrs. Harris. My client, Frankie, hit your boy with his fist. But I'm sure it wasn't murder. All I know, Mr. Matthews, is that my son Paul is dead. And now another boy's life is at stake. You'll be called to testify at his trial. If you're asking me to testify in favor of the boy who took my son's life, I'm sorry, but I'll have to disappoint you. That boy is guilty of murder. But is he? After everything you've told me, I can't help but feel that my client acted in self-defense. Thank you for everything, Mrs. Harris. And I'm sure that when you testify tomorrow, you will say what you feel is right. Goodbye. As a result of Mrs. Harris's testimony and proof that Frankie acted in self-defense, he was completely cleared. Now, we have had numerous cases where lack of parental care contributed to crime. This is one of many where overwhelming attention can destroy a child's identity and lead to violence. The case you have just seen was brought to a fair and just conclusion through the efforts of a public defender.